Hi, my name is Ken Jones, and I'm here to share my story. At PRTC, which is the local transportation um, company, I was the manager of the dispatch department. And the new uh, executive director came on board about three years ago. And he instituted a reduction in force. And uh, the uh, reason given was finances. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, but once I realized what was going on, everybody that he was rifting was only African American or Latino. Um, so once I realized that as being the, the only manager that, that was really impacted, um, I had a discussion with them, and what they told me was if uh, I kept my people in their place, that I would be safe and that they would create a position for me. Um, that wasn't acceptable to me. So 15 months straight, I, along with some of the employees, went and uh, addressed the board, telling them, you know, this work was, was discriminatory. So the first time we went, uh, former supervisor Frank Principe, he was the chair of the board at that time, and this was the in December of 2017. And he said, okay, well, we'll do a, a independent uh, e EOC investigation. So I was fine with it, but little did I know the independent was the county EOC department, because PRTC doesn't have an EOC um, department. And you know, as time went on, the investigation took almost, I guess, uh, about nine months. Um, and when it came out, I had a conversation with another former supervisor. Um, and he told me that day, he said, well, I've seen these things happen. And they always come back that there's incidents, but never uh, discrimination found. And then as I touched bases with, you know, NAACP members and other people in the Civil Rights Committee here in Pennsylvania County, they pretty much said, you know, that office is a joke, you know. And then as I, as I went further, I found out the count, Prince William County's attorney was actually representing PRTC. Mm -hmm. And they were also overseeing the EOC investigation. So that was a direct conflict of interest. You know, no attorney has ever found problems with their own client before. And um, so, of course, they came back, you know, there were incidents but no discrimination. Um, instead of rifting, there was uh, 14 initially. He reduced it just to my department because they were the most outspoken against it. And so then he went on with the rift um, during that time. And, um, you know, it was, it, was, it was disheartening because it's so clear and blatant. And, you know, since then it's even become, you know, more clear that it wasn't about money. Because three months after he did the RIF, he started hiring, creating positions and hiring white people in a job. Um, and while this was going on, at the same time, there was an a, a African-American temp who was actually his, his executive assistant. She was a temp. And she was groped and, and basically assaulted in the lunchroom. It was witnessed by another employee. And it was by a, a white female. And it was reported to the director, nothing ever happened to her. She still did. Subsequently, you know, a younger white female, she was basically assaulted by, by another employee there um, in the, the base, basically the maintenance room. And again, uh, the, what, what the executive director said was that it was a, a, a misunderstanding. You know, again, the temp, she was, as soon as she made the claim, you know, within a couple of weeks, she was gone. The the um, contractor, she was a security guard there that they contract. As soon as she made the claim, they told her. You know, so it's not just discrimination; it's like economic violence that occurs too. And so that's why I'm still fighting. You know, um, they expect us to just go away and just drop it, um, but I refuse to. They deserve justice. You know, and they they assume that they're not going to fight. You know. Um, but, you know, I, I refuse to let it drop. So I just keep, keep, on, keep on with the fight, you know, and, and we'll see what, what comes up.